Alrighty guys, so a NAND gate, N-A-N-D, is made up of one AND gate and one NOT gate to invert its output. So let's just build one very quick to see what I'm talking about. I'm going to scroll in. This is the AND gate. I'm going to place it down. We need a NOT gate. I'm going to place it down. This is the output of the AND gate. We're going to feed it to the NOT gate. This is inverting its output. We need some inputs over here. So here we go. One there. Then we need to output this. All right, connect these all together. All right, so this is a NAND gate, and this is the truth table that expresses what it does. So what it essentially says is that when both inputs are one, it will output a zero. As you can see right here, when one, we get a zero. And for all the other outputs, we will get a one. So for zero, zero, it will output a 1, for 1, 0, it would output a 1, and for 0, 1, it will output a 1. So why is this important? Why did they even bring this up? Well, it's because the NAND gate, N-A-N-D, is known as the universal gate, or aka, functionally complete. And essentially that means that from the NAND gate, we can create all the other gates, like AND, NOT, OR, and etc. It's so important, in fact, that it gets its own special little symbol. So here, I'm not sure you guys can read this, but it says NAND gate. And this is the symbol for it, the shorthand for writing these two. So it's basically an AND gate with a dot at the end. And the dot represents the inversion of its output. So these two do the exact same thing. They, have the, they share the exact same truth table. So again, why is this important? Because this NAND gate can create all the other gates, like AND, not or etc. But again, I know it's a little weird. I just said that NAND is made up of one AND and one NOT gate. So why are we building the AND and the NOT gate from a NAND gate if we already have them to build a NAND gate, right? It's a little it's a little chicken egg thing. Like, wouldn't it just be more efficient if we were just given the AND and the NOT gate to build the NAND rather than just be given the NAND to build the AND and the NOT, right? Why do we have to go through the middleman of a NAND gate to build all the other gates? Wouldn't it just be better if we just cut out the middleman? Well, this is an electrical engineering question that involves voltages and transistors and etc. Things that I'm not really qualified to answer. But what I can say is that it's not that efficient to cut out the NAND gate because it's a uniform building block. And it's a really hard question, honestly. So Sometimes it makes things worse, is all I can say. And I will link to sources in the description below if you're curious about this. But for this course in particular, we're just going to focus on using the abstraction of the truth table and how to wire these gates together. And really not worrying about where they come from or how they're implemented or how efficient things are. This is the basis of abstraction, right? No one needs to know mechanical engineering to drive a car. Instead, an interface is exposed. This is the interface. We just plug two things in and we get something out. And the underlying implementation is hidden. So this is the implementation of the NAND gate, right? This is usually hidden. And when you're driving a car, for example, the interface is exposed, right? An interface is exposed like the steering wheel and the pedal, and they just tell you what to do and what does what. So you don't have to be concerned with how everything underneath kind of turns, right? All the engines and stuff. But if you're curious about that, of how everything works from all the way down, you should look into physics and electrical engineering. But again, for us, we're just concerned with the truth table and using the abstractions of combinatorial logic. Alrighty, so you are going to be given a NAND gate and from this NAND gate, you're gonna build all the other gates. And when you have built those other gates, you can use the gates that you just built to build other gates. And I know that sounds confusing, but bear with me. We're going to go hop into the hardware simulator so you can get a better feel for what I mean. So the hardware simulator works on Mac, Windows, and Linux, but you will need Java. And really just download the .exe file, click next a bunch of times, and then install it. I already have done so. Secondly, you'll need the software emulation suit. Uh, I have all the links in the description, so don't worry. 
uh, download the zip file to your desktop or something and then extract it. So I already have it downloaded and I have Java installed already. Extract the folder anywhere to your desktop, wherever is convenient, and then open that folder up. So go to tools and then click hardware simulator.bat if you're on Windows and .sh if you're on Mac or Linux. So we're going to open this up. So this window should pop up if you have Java installed correctly. If you don't, just leave a message in the comments and I will try to help you out. But anywho, this is where we're going to be working in for the majority of the course. And what we're going to do is that we're going to edit HDL files located in the products folder. We're going to start at 01 and we're going to edit these HDL files. You have to right click it and open with a text editor. So right click, open with, you can use Notepad, VS Code, Sublime, whatever. I'm going to use Notepad first just to show you guys and then I'm going to switch to VS Code later. But the order that we're going to have to be writing all these chips in, it's recommended that you follow the order. It's not mandatory though. But they are not and or SOAR, MUX, DMUX, and then the 16-bit variants and all the other variations. Now I know this sounds like a lot, but really when you just do these, the rest, the variations aren't that much work, honestly. But you'll see when you get there. So we're going to start off with the NOT gate. We're given the NAND gate. As you notice, it says NAND primitive. And we're going to have to build a NOT gate from the NAND gate. So let's just do that right now. So go to your projects folder. Um, where is it? Right here. So projects, open up NOT.HTL. Not the NOT16s, but just the regular NOT.HTL. Open it up in whatever editor, and this is HDL. So HDL stands for Hardware Description Language, and it is a declarative language that does not have if statements, for loops, functions, things that you would expect from a programming language. There are variations that do, but in this case, the authors decided to keep it simple, and we're just going to have to deal with it. And some people are pissed off, but really just think of it as that programming languages have not been invented yet, and we are building the baseline for a programming language to exist. So, anywho, this is HDL. So here, chip not open curly brace, close curly brace. This is declaring a chip, specifically the not chip. And what does in and out mean? Well, if we go to our gate diagrams, the in, this is the in. The in is the input wire, so it is a variable that declares an input wire, in a sense, and the values are always either 0 or 1, again, because we are in a binary system, and the output is just the output wire. And again, back to abstraction, anything that happens inside here is the implementation. Remember what I said about the car, that uh, usually the implementation is covered up and an interface is provided so like a steering wheel and a pedal and etc so we put our implementation right over here in parts so it says put your code here and this is where we're gonna this is where we are going to write the implementation of the of the logic gates <clears throat> so the NAND gates I said that we are going to be given a NAND gates and we're gonna have to build all the other gates. So we're gonna to have to call a function of sorts. It's not really a function, but uh, it's a good analogy. So this is the interface for the NAND gate. The NAND gate, let me refer back to the diagram. This is hard to visualize and it's a really confusing language. So, so we're gonna call a NAND function. I'm gonna say function, because I don't know, that just makes sense. We're gonna call the NAND function. We're gonna plug an A and a B input and we're going to get out an output. So I'm going to diagram this out because this is a really weird, it's better to visualize this, trust me. So this is a NOT gate, right? And there's only one input coming in. So I'm going to place an input down right over here. All right, I'm going to label it in because there we go. I'm going to drag it down here and remove it. I'm going to ignore the top part. We don't need the top part because we already have the stand gate. 
So again, we are given a NAND gate. And the interface word is here. I'm just going to copy this. So right over here, copy. And we're going to paste this into HDL. Right over here. Uh, semicolons and commas and the casing for the input wire names are case sensitive. So make sure you get these right. So this is our NOT gate. Again, we have an IN and we have a NAND gate. So it's right here. I'm going to delete it and place it down again so you guys can get the um, sort of description I'm going for. So NAND, I'm going to place it down. This is what I just wrote. It takes two input wires. So this is A and this is B. So we need to plug in to A and plug in to B. Why are we doing this? Well, we're creating a NOT gate. And secondly, uh, there's nothing else to do really. So, yeah. So I just plugged the N to A and B. How do we do this textually? Well, A is equal to N, right? These wires are called N. So N is going to A and N is going to B. So I'm gonna type B equals N. We're plugging the N gates in and we're connecting the output, right? The, the output right here. So out equals out. And what that essentially means in a visual sort of metaphor is that there is an output and we are plugging it out. We're pretty much pushing out an output wire. And this represents the not function or the not gate. So let's just test this. Um, where's the not truth table? That's NAND, not. So what not again does, for those of you guys who don't remember, it turns a zero into a one and a one to a zero. So here, an input is zero. It is turning into a one. And now when the input is one, it is turning into a zero. And if you guys don't get how this works, I recommend that you really run through the, um, the truth tables, right? You can really elaborate this. So I'm plugging in zero. I'm plugging in two inputs that are one into the NAND gate. So what does two inputs that are one equal when we plug them into a NAND gate? But we just go to the truth table. One, one is a zero. That does follow the inversion that we're going for. And is zero, zero. If we plug both inputs, input variables that are zero, zero, they will be a one. So we have just created a NOT gate. So here it is. This is our NOT gate. I'm going to make sure there's no space. I'm going to save the file and we're going to load it into HTL. So let's go to our hardware simulator. We're going to click this load chip icon. And here we're going to load our NOT.HDL file. Now, originally you start at inside the, from the tools folder. So you're going to need to navigate to the folder. So click up one projects and find your HDL file. Here we want to go load in the knot that we just finished. We're going to click load chip and here it is. So this is the only pane that you can touch, the input pin, input pins pane. All the other, all the other panes are immutable and they are really read only. So you can't really change anything even if you wanted to. So that means that when you ever, whenever you make a change to an HDL file, you need to go to your editor, make a change, right? Save it and then click load and then load the chip to get the changes in. And um, this is invalid, so I'm going to remove this, save it, and then load it back in. You cannot edit in this pane for some reason. And um, it's whenever at this point. So here we go. So we loaded the not gate in, and we want to test if we implemented it successfully. So we can click load script and we can find a test script of the same name as the HDL file. So we're gonna click not.tst. It should be the same name as the HDL file. If it's not, then you're testing, you're running a test script on the wrong chip. Okay, so we're gonna load script and it will load the script file in. And the script file is pretty self-explanatory, but what it does essentially is set n to zero. It will set this input pin to zero. It's already zero now, 
and later on it will hit this line it says set in to one and it will set the input wire to one so this is what it's doing really it's calling the input all right so we're going to click single step this is going to step through it for debugging purposes so it's going to go one step in and it's going to stop so we're going to have to keep clicking single step um, to successfully finish the script otherwise we can click run and it will run through the whole thing so eventually you're going to need to single step for debugging purposes but for now we're just going to run through the whole thing so click run and it's going to run to completion if it doesn't run to completion it means that the script has failed and it will tell you and i will show you in the next one um what a favorite looks like but uh for some reason it's hidden and if i scroll if i expand this window it will say end of script comparison ended successful this means that we have successfully implemented our not gate and we can really see the comparison the output of it by going into our projects it will generate an out dot out file and we need to compare this with a dot cmp file so does our dot out file match the dot cmp file well, we can open the file up with notepad and we will check our dot out file and make sure it matches the dot cmp file so open this up with uh, notepad here we go do these match yes they do so we have successfully implemented our not gate and this is a simple example uh, later on there's going to be a lot of these and you're really going to have to look at these files and check if they match or not and where they don't match you're gonna have to do a whole lot of debugging work so yeah now let's move on to the next gate which is the and we're gonna implement the and so uh, where is it we're gonna open up the and.hdl and and here we go I'm gonna open up with Visual Studio Code now okay here we go. Uh, it will ask you uh, that it can help get syntax highlighting for the HDL file. So let's just get it because it's um, it's useful. So click this add-on and install it so we can get syntax highlighting. And it will try to prevent, hopefully it'll catch syntax errors. Anywho, so now we're going to make the AND gate and we just built the NOT gate. So as I said earlier, when you're going to build, when you finish building a gate, you can use the gate that you just built to build other gates. So we can use the not gate that we just built, like so. And what are the names of the input wires? Well, if you go to this site, we're going to look for it. Uh, where is it? It's called not. The name of the input wire is called dot in. It's just called in. So we're going to say in, and there's going, and there's going to be an out. Okay, so we're going to plug in something to a NOT gate, and we're going to get an output. So let's go back and try to diagram this visually. So how do we build a AND gate from an AND gate? Well, it's kind of obvious. So an AND gate, again, is not AND, right? This is our AND gate. So how do we reverse this? Well, not and, if we not a not, then that means we're pretty much negating the entire thing, right? A negative times a negative is a positive, right? If I'm not guilty, that means that I'm innocent. But if I'm not not guilty, right, that means that the innocent got negated and I'm still guilty in a way. So you can sort of think of it like that. So what we do is that we're going to, we're going to need a NAND gate also, actually. Yeah, I forgot. So we need an AND, we need a semicolon at the end, the inputs are A, the input wires are named A, and the B, and out. Okay, whoops. So let's diagram this visually. So here we have an AND gate. Let me open up the uh, truth table. Where is it? Right over, huh, it is not here. Oh, wait, here it is. All right, so this is our AND gate. Again, we're going to have two inputs. This is A and B. 
and we're gonna have an output. So this is A, this is B, and this is an output. So two things, two inputs are coming in. They're named A and B. So let's diagram this again. I'm gonna put it here. And this is A. We're gonna need another input. And this is the B input. Why is it labeled the same? There we go. So we're gonna plug these in. And we're gonna need the not gate right over gates not here we go there and then we need an output here we go and there we go so let's go back to our hdl file whoops this is the not key we're done with that here so we're going to plug a into a of the input wire for the NAND gate and B into B and out we're going to declare it as a variable so we're going to say uh, it can be anything we want and I'm not creative of names so I'm just going to say uh, n out n underscore out I think you can put underscores so we're going to plug n out this wire right here it's called n out right we're going to plug n out into a not gate so this is what we're doing and then we're going to connect the output of this one, the output of the wire, to the output here in the diagram, right? This output. An output wire is going out. So we're going to connect that. Yeah, this refers to an output wire going out. So let's load this into the hardware simulator. So we're going to go to load chip go to and load this in it says uh, and line 18 semicolon or um, parentheses expected what um, so I guess underscores are not allowed so I'm just gonna name them in out there we go okay so we're gonna load them back in Load back the hand. Yeah, okay, so underscores can be used. So the outputs are in out and out. Okay. So as you can see these it says internal pins and in out. So again this right here is an internal pin, right? Again, because this the implementation is covered up. So that's what it means by internal pin, anything that happens inside the implementation of the engine. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna load the test script and .tsg. Load test script. We're gonna run this through straight through, and it should work. Yeah. And it script comparison ended successfully. So our compare file should match our test file, as it does. But let me show you what happens if you mess this up, right? What happens if um, we did not implement the truth, the logic gate correctly. Um, my voice is getting dry. So let's just delete this not gate and we're going to connect it to the output, right? This is just wrong because it does not follow the truth table of the AND gate, right? Is zero one in an AND gate a one? No, it's a zero, right? A zero in a one is zero in an AND gate. So let's just write this in our HDL file. Uh, let me just remove this. And then connect the out to the output pin right here. Again, this is the wrong thing to do. I'm just showing you guys so that um, we can see what happens when things go wrong. So we'll load this in. I have to load the test script again. OK. And we're going to click. We're going to run this through. And here, see, so it stopped. It says set A to zero, and it can see that zero, zero is a one. And again, zero, zero in the AND gate implementation does not equal a one, it's a zero. So it will tell you where you went wrong, and it will stop you there. You can force it to run it through, right? Just keep clicking run, and it'll keep going through, 
and it will stop. It will keep stopping at failures. So we're just going to keep forcing it through. Okay. So it's going to write to a file. Again, the CMP on the .out file. Uh, where are they? Right here. So this is why I'm using Visual Studio Code. Uh, we're going to drag this in. And we need to compare it here. Okay, so the compare file is the source of truth. It's the key. And out is our implementation, is our result. So I'm going to close. There we go. So 0, 0 is a 1, right? This is the wrong thing that we did. And this is the right thing. So 0, 0 should equal 0. And 0, 1 is a 1. No, it should be a 0. So. Uh, there is a feature in VS Code. You can right-click and click Compare to File. Where is it? Uh, huh. Right-click. Okay, select for Compare. And we can compare it with the Compare file. Whoops, Compared with Selected. And it will show you what the heck? Oh, I'm comparing the same file. How do I close this? Select. Select for compare. And then compare with selected. Here we go. So it's going to say where, it's going to highlight where there are mismatches. And in this case, there's a, mis there's a mismatch everywhere except for this first row which is just the labeling of the inputs and output names. So, yeah. Alrighty then, guys. So that about does it for this one. And go back and fix the AND gates implementation, and you have the rest to go. So in the next video, I will briefly go over the MUX, DMUX, and the 16-bit variations, give a little background on them, and really how to take out a bit from a 16-bit bus in HDL syntax, which I have not went over yet. But there are some write-ups on it online that I will link in the description, so you can always read ahead if you want to. So ultimately, I recommend diagramming things out as you go, because we are visual animals, and I find that diagramming out helps a lot. Um, it's not mandatory to diagram everything out, but again, it's helpful. So circuitverse.org slash simulator or nangib.com serves a similar function. And yeah, so after you finish implementing a gate, I recommend trying to achieve the same functionality by using lesser gates. Really have fun challenging yourself. And yeah, take a break when you need to because the aha moment uh, comes from when you're taking a break. It's not when you're focused on the problem. I can't emphasize that enough. So take breaks, and most importantly, have fun. I mean, this is almost like a puzzle game, and yeah. So thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.